Hey, and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars 2022 Boba Fett's Throne Room. Set number 75326 with 732 pieces. We got seven minifigs down there on the bottom right. Tons to look at in depth here in a moment. And in the US, this one will set you back $100. If you do decide to order this after watching the review, there are affiliate links in the description below if you want to help support the channel. Speaking of supporting the channel, big shout out to Bryce and Elliot for helping me pick this one up early. Anyway, this is a book of Boba Fett set, so we'll see Boba Fett and Fennec Shand on the bottom left. Fennec Shand showing off her helmet there, even though it's unfortunately not included in the set. We do have the green stripe, which I really like on this one. Definitely helps show that it's a Boba Fett set. However, interestingly enough, this set is technically based off the end credit scene from The Mandalorian Season 2 with those characters there, so definitely very interesting that they've decided to package it as a Book of Boba Fett set, even though the appearance and the character selection that we have here is from The Mandalorian Season 2. Star Wars usually doesn't do end credit scenes like that, but now LEGO has set the precedent, so we'll see if this affects any LEGO Star Wars sets going forward. Anyway, the back of the box shows off the features that we're about to take a look at, and just all the figures and stuff in a different orientation with Boba Fett having taken over the throne room there. When it comes to taking LEGO pieces out of a box, I'm kind of your guy. Oh yeah. Looks like we have numbered bags that go all the way up to number six. Oh, I hate this. Why would you, like, if this is the Avengers Tower, I get it, but you've taken a set that's, like, horizontal and given it a vertical instruction manual, this is awful! Why would they do it like this? Upon further investigation, looking through the instructions, they made it vertical so that they could stack it, versus if it was horizontal like this, they could probably only fit one thing on each page instead of two things on each page. The Boba Fett figure for this set is still laughably inaccurate, using the old sand green mixed with that newer dark green armor color on his torso, and it's just not a great look. It's incredibly inaccurate to what we see in both the Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett, and it's sad to see LEGO has no intention of making it proper for a $100 LEGO Star Wars set. He'll have a face print underneath the helmet to look like Tamara Morrison. Looks pretty nice. Got some white marks on there and stuff. Pretty good face print. Even on the back, they've marked a little bit up there, so it's not like a double-sided face, but it does have printing on the back, which is always a real cool look. And removing the jetpack will reveal a surprisingly detailed back print. Next up is Fennec Shand, and while her body, arm, leg, and waist prints look incredible, in fact, some of the best you'll ever see on LEGO Star Wars figures, the hairpiece they have decided to give her is just atrocious. It is a piece that they kind of brought over from Marvel Eternals, so I think this was a hairpiece first made for a Marvel Eternals character, and then put on Fennec Shand, and it doesn't fit at all. There's a second face, so removing the hairpiece you have two faces. And in removing it, you'll notice that his fat is actually going to block the movement of the arm, or really his head tail, I guess, that wraps around the front of his head there. But that's as far up as you can move the arm. The other arm should get slightly better motion, but it still won't be like a regular Lego figure where you can spin the arm all the way around. To me, it kind of looks like they tried to make the torso look kind of extra fat, but not really. I don't know. It's it's definitely a bit of a weird look without the head tail piece on there, and you can see a second face on the other side, bit of a hat your face I guess like Boba I thought you were dead and then Boba's gonna kill him so then he <laughs> switches over to this real scared I'm about to die type of face but yeah that'll pop back on pretty easily pretty nice figure and he'll sit on the throne here in a minute this is a Thelan dancer, and her real name is Rystal Sant. She is in a few Star Wars movies surprisingly as a background character and also a background character at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2, Behind the Throne. Not very easy to pick out there, but she is there, so it's kind of cool to get her in this set. A very nice-looking figure, a much more... I don't know flamboyance the word, but pink is not a color you see a lot, and so I think that really stands out to me and looks pretty cool. Here, if we pull that pink hairpiece off too, you'll notice... Some of the markings there, or those little horns. I think those are supposed to be little horns. Same thing on the back here, little horns kind of sticking out the side of her head there. Very cool looking figure. I never thought I'd see the day, but we finally have a Corrin Lego Star Wars minifigure. The only real downside to this character, I guess, is that he can't turn his head, but that's just a byproduct of the mold. It was kind of the same deal with Kit Fisto. Those types of characters just can't turn their head, whatever. And it is rubberized, so you'll see the shine on it might be a little bit different, but certainly you'll notice it as I squeeze these things. They definitely have a little bit of give to them without snapping 
snapping, which is definitely what you want for a headpiece like this. Very good looking character overall, and if we remove it, you'll see he does have a pretty detailed torso print. Here we've got a weak way guard, very good looking character as well. Huge fan of this figure making its way into the set. We've got a nice shiny metallic blaster for him. Maybe the worst part about him is no printed legs, but everything else about this character is on point. Despite Book of Boba Fett typically depicting two Gamorrean guards together, this set does only include one. I can only assume the set was designed before they knew that there would be two together almost all of the time, but nonetheless, it is a very good Gamorrean guard with the same mold that we got back in 2012. No reason to change that up, but it is a bit of a different print, and they've added on foot printing to the bottom of the legs for the Gamorrean guard, so that's a really nice detail as well. Huge fan of this character with his axe and a great final minifig for the set. Before we're able to look at all of the fun features this thing has to offer, we have to look at its displayability. Is this something worth picking up to throw on your shelf and display for people to see? And my answer is probably not. It's ugly, especially compared to the 2012 version. It essentially looks like they took the 2012 version, chopped the top of the watchtower down quite a bit. You can see a very big difference in size there. And then most importantly, the very top part of the roof for Jabba's palace is completely missing on Boba's here. And there are theories that they might make an addition to the build on top to add on Boba Fett's back to tank. I don't think that's going to happen personally. I think that the roof looks like this because there was a lot of allegations that it looked too much like a mosque and it was this big drama thing that happened back in 2012-2013 for LEGO Star Wars. And so it to me is pretty apparent that that's why we have this ugly looking thing. As far as the 2022 set on its own attributes from the external point of view, it does have some cool things going on, like this snake here, which is attached by a clip so that you don't lose it. Like if it didn't have the clip, I was definitely gonna lose a snake. So definitely for the best that it has the clip. We also have the gatekeeper eye and a very nice texture to the door that the gatekeeper eye is inserted into. I'll show you how that works in a moment. And then above that, we have a guard turret, which can shoot at any undesirable visitors and then we have the very top part of the guard tower which actually looks pretty good it's actually got a roof to it that's rounded off and looks nice so there's very little space up here but you could fit a figure up here if you really wanted to i suppose you could put like the weak way guard up here and he can stand up there it's not the best looking thing it's definitely not necessarily made to do that but you can the other side of the palace build is kind of like a cantina exterior so nothing crazy going on there a ladder just kind of randomly placed to add some depth to it i suppose inside the guard tower is where you're more likely going to want to put a minifigure and at the top there on the inside is where you actually have some plates to maybe place a weak way guard or your gamorian guard if you really want to and then if we flip it back around and look at it from the outside you can actually see him in there there's a pair of binoculars to his right and then below that we have the door and gatekeeper eye so all you have to do to use the gatekeeper eye is like push this out and then it's kind of in use somewhat wiggleable from the back and they have built it in a way that allows you to raise and lower the door if the eye is pushed back so i have the eye pushed all the way forward right now so if i try to raise the door it will only open about quarter of the way but if we push it all the way back, we can actually push the door all the way up because there's actually a gap in the front of the guard tower build that allows it to pass through. And one other cool thing about the door is while it's not particularly intuitive, if you just let go of it, it's gonna fall back down. But if you push it up and then you push the eye forward, it actually locks it into place so you can keep the door up for yourself to just walk many figures in and out or play with it. So you can take a figure like Boba Fett and place him on the stairs to be walking down the stairs. And maybe Boba Fett's not the best example for this, but if you'll notice this small knob on the side, it can actually be turned to fling a minifigure off of the stairs. Well, that was kind of lame. One more time for the road. Yeah, it seems like not the greatest feature. It doesn't have that much give to it. Like that's as far as it'll go. So you're not gonna get figures to fly very far, but it's still a very nice small hidden feature that doesn't really take away from the look of the set, but definitely adds nice playability for kids. The final thing to know about this particular section is that it can separate from the main section. It's just clipped in right here. There's a clip and then there's a bar right there that it clips into to stay into place when you want it to stay into place. So this whole tower can actually spin about 90 degrees there, which is nice if you wanna change up the angle of display but it does create kind of this weird opening in the side of the palace that doesn't look the greatest to me from a display point of view maybe it's good for play but anyway the first thing you'll know about the cantina side of things is that it 
also can pop off of the middle section just a little bit. It's still on a hinge here, but it can rotate just 90 degrees again, just like the other side. It is a very small cantina seating area with a silver cup back there. You've got some other drinks or food here on the table. And then on the box, they show the Koran minifigure being seated to the right. And then surprisingly on the back of the box, the Gamorrean guard can join him. You can fit two figures in there. Maybe the Gamorrean guard is a little bit larger than you would like to try and fit a figure in there with, but yeah, it's a nice space to have. Now onto the throne section, a section that has a great sticker design above it to add some detail from the throne room. However, in the instructions and on the box, they leave a gap. So if you buy this set and you're gonna put those stickers on there, I would suggest doing it like I did and leave no gap. I think it looks really sharp like that. Looking at the roof above, it is very flat. It does have a couple of grates that allow light to pass through into the actual throne room, which is a nice detail. It is unfortunate that the roof is flat though because it's just incredibly inaccurate looking and doesn't look good from that display point of view when you have it flipped around. In fact, I think this looks atrocious like this, but uh, yeah, it's real unfortunate. Anyway, you can pick the setup like this in the middle if you want to. You can also pick it up by the base because it's built on a base of bricks so that it is thick enough to support a little bit of wear and tear as far as movement goes. You don't have to worry about all that too much. The throne itself is really sharp from a certain point of view. From another point of view, not quite as much. When you can see down into there, I don't really like it. If you put a figure on there, we'll, we'll show you. It kind of resolves that issue, but the Rancor sticker detail at the front is really cool looking. I'm a huge fan of that. You can place a figure onto the throne so you can see one stud there for a figure like Bib Fortuna perhaps to be placed upon the throne. And then there's also these dark red tile plate pieces that we saw in the cantina area. And you can see with the figures complementing him, it does look pretty cool and like a filled out space. There were obviously plenty of other characters around him at the end credit scene of season two, so you could definitely add in more if you want. There is some extra space there. One of the more questionably weird things about this build is the grating in front of the throne where Bib Fortuna sits. So if we have Boba Fett out there, the grating doesn't actually drop into anything. They're not gonna release a Rancor pit or anything that attaches below this that you could drop the grating. The grating is actually completely attached to the throne bit, which moves, we'll show that in a moment, but you can just have a figure stand there and it's supposed to represent where the character stands. So I guess I get it from that point of view, but it is just kind of this weird thing that pops out of the build when everything else is kind of contained. But if you want to overthrow Bib Fortuna, all you have to do is push forward on this lever kind of quickly. So if you push like that, he will get thrown out of the seat and then you can remove him. So you'll see this little thing moves in there. Basically that stud holds him down and then it creates enough pressure where where it eventually just pops him out. Then you can bring in Boba Fett and have him take over the throne. And then it becomes, of course, Boba Fett's throne room. And Boba Fett does look pretty dang cool in that chair, much cooler than Bib Fortuna. So if you're gonna display it like this, I mean, you gotta put Boba in there. You can remove the throne. All you have to do is pull forward like this and it pops right out. And so it makes for a pretty simple function to remove and re-add the throne. I thought the throne might connect in in some meaningful way and actually attach, but it's loosely in there. So if you pick up the set and lean it forward, it will just fall out. So one more quick look at that throne ejection function from the other side, just like that. And he pops right out. You can see that's what the throne seat looks like in a little bit better detail. This is what it looks like from behind and underneath just kind of built up on a platform. Underneath the throne, there's a couple of weapons and a couple of bars of Beskar that are hidden away from view. There's actually a surprising way to access behind the throne. You could just pull the throne out and try to reach your hand in here and do all that. That's that's a pain. You're not going to want to do that. What you're actually going to want to do is push down on this, hold this, and pull away from the palace. You can see, I don't know if it's a bit tight because it's just brand new, but it's a bit of a, a pull to get that to come apart. It's not the easiest thing in the world. On the inside section, there's a box with a blue crystal inside. You can see a blue drink right behind there on a table. And then at the very front on the inside wall is this thing. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but I know that it's something that Bib Fortuna or Jabba would eat or drink out of. Speaking of eating and drinking and Bib Fortuna putting on weight right behind his throne, 
I took the throne out just to make it easier to see, is the rotisserie area. So we've got a couple of Lego chicken legs on there, and this can actually spin around 360 degrees just like this. It actually spins surprisingly nicely, and you can see where the heat would rise up to warm or cook the chicken. And off to the right are a couple of bones in a little bin, possibly from previously eaten chicken legs. And then behind that is this whole kitchen area with what looks to me like, you know, an exhaust area where basically the smoke could go up and out. I'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to represent, but that's what the shape looks like to me. We have a couple of these red lights back there, which add some nice mood for the lighting. And then I really like the silver color choice for those grill pieces at the front of that kitchen table there. There's also a control panel in the very back, and that's pretty much all you got going on in there. It just creates a very nice open play environment when you open up the back panel for the palace where kids can bring in other characters to have a feast or have a fight, whatever you want to have them do. There is undoubtedly endless play possibility with a playset like this that just has so many cool functions and features packed into it. Well, LEGO tried to make this set the best of both worlds for a playset on the inside and a display set on the outside for the adult collectors. It ultimately flops and it flops hard because it's completely missing the top part of the roof. I, I don't know why you would want to pay $100 for just the throne, but the throne on its own could make a very nice desk display piece. You pull that front piece off, unless you want to put a figure or two on that front piece to be talking to Boba Fett, then I say keep it on, but you can pull that front piece off and just use the throne itself as a display piece, and I think that works rather well because that doesn't. This is a set that I wanted to love, but I just can't. When your roof looks like that and you're still putting out a bad Boba Fett minifigure and somehow now they've downgraded Fennec Shan because they got rid of her helmet and gave her a bad hairpiece, it's, it's just a tough pill to swallow all for the low, low price not so low price, I suppose, of 100 US dollars. It's just too much money for what you're getting. If you can get this on sale, 80 bucks or less, yeah, maybe, go wild. But anything over that, I just feel like is too much money for this. At the end of the day, for me, it's like a 5.5 out of 10. It's just not that great, and it's unfortunate because I really wanted to love it. If you do decide you wanna buy this set anyway, please use one of the affiliate links in the description below. It helps support the channel. Let me know what you think about the set in the comments section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and you can check out more 2022 LEGO Star Wars set reviews on the end screen now.